In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to a people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting at his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways, and and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God, whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts. Like the earth, patched lifeless and without water. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. I will remember you upon my couch, and through the night watches I will meditate on you. My help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, 
and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Stay awake and be ready, for you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Alleluia. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We now enter upon the final three weeks of the church year, taking us up to the end of November. And over the next three Sundays, the focus of the Gospels will on each of these Sundays be the same theme, the second coming of Christ in glory, as we have just heard in this parable, which Jesus tells, but it's very evident that he's talking about himself in this parable. Jesus promises that he will return that he will come again. And in this parable, uh, the bridegroom, also known as Jesus, unexpectedly comes at midnight, and those who are ready and are prepared for his coming go into the wedding feast with him. Once again, that theme of heaven depicted as a wedding feast, which he keeps bringing up over and over and over again in all of his parables, the wedding feast of the Lamb. And what a glorious event that second coming of Jesus will be, as we heard from St. Paul in the second reading today. The Lord himself will come down from heaven with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, 
and the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And Paul says, I give this to you on the word of the Lord. So, of course, this is Jesus' own mind, which he talks about in the gospel, which St. Paul in his time is sharing, the second coming of Christ. So it's a fact that Jesus himself talks about and tells us about. And it is so factual, of course, that it is central to our faith as Catholic Christians. So central, in fact, that it's even enshrined in our profession of faith in the creed. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And that's what we look forward to. He will come again in glory for the universal judgment of all the living. And because we look forward to that, because that's our expectation, by definition, we Christians are a people of hope. We are hopeful for a reality that is to come. Sometimes, you know, in common language, we use the word hope to signify something that may not happen. Well, we hope, I don't know, we hope this or that. But in the biblical sense, scriptural sense, hope is founded on a factual event, a reality that is going to happen or has already happened. And this is the second coming of Jesus, which is our hope. We look forward to his second coming. And because of that, we live for his second coming. It's just part of our daily mindset, our daily expectation, and influences, therefore, our activities, our thoughts, our everything we do waiting for the Lord to come, preparing ourselves for his coming. We are reminded of this at every Mass, constantly reminded that we are a people of hope. I like, to talk, I like to talk about, of course, the Holy Eucharist, one of my favorite topics which brings us together as one body in Christ. And it's significant that right at the consecration of the Mass, when Christ has become present, his real presence. We address him, Jesus, directly, and we talk to him who is really present, and as we're talking to him, we let him know that we are living for his second coming. It's right there at the consecration. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Our faith in his second coming is expressed right there. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Several times during the Mass, we're making explicit, specific reference to our faith in his second coming. And it's interesting to note that the whole Eucharistic prayer is addressed to God the Father. But... At that one moment, when Christ becomes really present at the consecration, we shift our attention away for those few moments and acknowledge that Jesus has come. Hidden under the appearance of bread and wine, we acknowledge him, we speak to him, and we profess our faith in him. We proclaim your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection, O Lord until you are coming again, addressing Jesus. Because our faith at that point is telling us, and we know, as he himself said, I am present. This is my body, this is my blood, the real presence. And then after that, the consecration, we return, the rest of the Eucharistic prayer is again dressing God the Father. It's a very, very fascinating, if you look at the, the way the Mass, is constructed and put together, addressing Jesus, who is really present. In these very confusing times in which we live, the year 2020 
which will go down in history in our lives, great upheaval in our lives. We can never allow the flame of faith, hope, and charity to be extinguished in our lives, just as we hear Jesus warning us today in this parable about the foolish virgins in the parable who experienced the light in their lanterns going dim. We can't experience the light of Christ's love begin to grow dim and fade in our own lives. But like the wise virgins, to have ready to nourish that flame of Christ's light in us through our prayer, through our holy sacrifice of the Mass, through good works that are done for love of Christ. To be like the wise ones who are ready for his coming and don't let the flame of faith, the flame of hope for what is to come, and the flame of charity grow dim and get extinguished, but to keep it burning bright, despite the times, no matter what the times bring us. This opening prayer we have for the Mass today really providentially speaks to that theme. Almighty and merciful God, keep from us all adversity so that we may freely pursue the things that are yours, so that we keep in our sights what really is important, preparing ourselves for you to come again in glory. A factual event which Jesus announces. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is our Savior, and it is his kingdom that we live for. He is our joy, and he is our hope. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not to be consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God our Father has given us his only Son, Jesus, to be our hope and our salvation. Now through Christ, let us address our prayers to the Father in heaven. For the gift of wisdom, may we always look for the wisdom of God so that we know what is of lasting value in life and live lives that accord with God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that she may teach us to be like the wise women in the gospel story, so we may be ready to greet the Lord at all times, taking seriously Jesus' teachings by lives that proclaim gospel values with actions that witness to his way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may trust in God's goodness, commending to him those who have fallen asleep in the Lord, especially those whose names are in the white box on the altar, confessing our faith in God's power to save, 
confident that God will care for us in life and in death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That when the Lord visits us, we may respond in love, caring for those in need, recognizing his presence in those who are suffering in our world, especially those who are sick in body, soul, or mind, that they may find consolation and hope in the mercy of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that they will be granted eternal peace in the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the Diocese of Charlotte, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our refuge and our strength, the source of all of our good. Hear these holy prayers of your church and grant that we may fully obtain whatever we ask for in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. history of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, our patron, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession, in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasant to you at their passing from this life, give kind and maintenance to your kingdom. They will to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Lord, Almighty Lord, Father, in the unity Lord, of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. This is the final weekend that St. Basil's uh, Ukrainian Catholic Parish will be offering Mass, uh, the Divine Liturgy here at the cathedral. They will begin next week starting, uh, I'm not sure what time, having their Divine Liturgy at St. Thomas Aquinas. Therefore, next weekend we will begin, at least with COVID and restrictions and whatever else, we will begin back at our regular uh, uh, schedule of Masses. So. Um, 5.30 on Saturday night, and then 7.30, 9, 11, and 12.30 on Sundays. So we'll be returning, um, still obviously remembering social distancing and the restrictions on how many folks can come into the church at the same time. Um, so you'll have one additional mass that's in the Latin rite that you may come to next, beginning next week. Um, we also have the, um, the prayer intentions that, that we can put here on the altar. The envelopes are in your pews or at the doors. Also, the violet, the violet candles here that you can uh, have uh, lit in honor of someone who has passed away. And then beginning today, with everything going on with our elections, we are beginning, for the good of our country, a 54-day miraculous rosary novena. Uh, there should be some at the entrances of the church. If not, you can go online on our website and find the, the novena. I encourage you, please, to... Uh, begin that novena and pray with it with the intention of the protection of our nation. Um, we are in sort of perilous times right now, and we need a lot of protection. Our Lady is to whom we run. She is our life, our sweetness, and our hope, and she always brings us to our Lord. So please um, join us. I will, on Monday through Friday, I will actually come here in the cathedral at 7.30 a.m., if anyone would like to join me, I would love to have a group of militia of the men of the parish to be here with me to pray at 7.30 in the morning, uh, Monday through Friday. Obviously, Saturday and Sundays, uh, our schedule doesn't permit that particular uh, reality. Um, but please join us in that for the good of our country. We are in desperate need. Thank you. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God. By the power of God, cast in hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world. <clears throat>